Hey YouTube, Poops Lag here, and this is Turbo Fat, an open source puzzle game I'm making in Godot. Source code's linked below if you want to check out how it all works. But this month I was adding these uh, sharks to the puzzles where they'll gobble up pieces you drop into them, and I think it's a cool little gimmick that I'd never seen that before. So I hope you'll stick around and let me show you how it all works. So this video is about a month late because I did spend a week in the Caribbean, a week taking care of some family stuff, and a week refactoring. I like to set aside a refactoring week every two months just to clean up some old code and move stuff around and work a little better. One thing I did, for example, is the way creatures sit on stools, stools do have like a different sprite from when they're being sat on, and the way that magic used to work is creatures would just have a stool field, and then if the stool field was set, that stool would know like I'm being sat on, and now it instead just works with a proximity search, so creatures will look through all the stools in the game and see like, is this one really close to me? And if so, that's that creature's stool. And it's just one last thing I have to do manually and mess up potentially, so it uh, makes my life easier. So as far as the shark concept, I first just designed how they might look in the play field, and I thought I might have sharks different sizes, like a big one and a little one. But the thing they all do is when the piece touches them, they'll eat it. Or maybe if they're small, they'll just eat like a part of it or something. And the problem, though, is if you're using your pieces to feed these sharks, you're not getting any points. So I figured they should give you a little reward, like maybe they'll eat your piece and spit out a star or something that you can collect and get some money. So first I did all the animations for the biggest of the sharks, and I drew it all up in Clip Studio Paint. And then in Godot, I created a shark scene, which stitches all those animations together using um, an animation player, which just says all the animations the shark can do, and then a homebrew state machine, which says all the ways to transition between those states and what needs to happen. For example, like when they start eating, like the sounds that need to play or whatever. Um, lastly, though, the animation for eating is actually a little more complicated than you might expect because there's this little dust cloud that appears and that thing widens if the piece is wider if you like turn it sideways and stuff so there was some logic for creating all the dust sprites and syncing them all up and stuff but it all looks pretty cool and the sharks dances are also synchronized so if you have like five sharks on a level they all do the same dance steps at the same time and the way that works is when a shark starts dancing he'll look through the scene tree to see if another shark is already dancing and if so he'll skip to that part in the animation it looks pretty cool um they all dance coincidentally at 115 beats per minute, which is the same speed as a popular shark song you might be able to guess. So at first I thought the sharks would reward the player the same way the moles do, where you'd like feed them, and then they would spit out a star, and then you'd collect the star with your next piece. But I thought it's kind of clunky to need to use two pieces for this, so let's just have the sharks give you a reward directly. You know, you fed me, have 50 bucks. And so I have these little bursts which pop up to give the player some money. So next I did the animations for the medium-sized shark, and you can see this isn't just a recolor, they are totally different, Different. they're a little shorter, they have a rounder nose, and I wanted them to have their own dance and their own personality. And when they eat your piece so they don't eat the whole thing, they just leave a little domino-shaped piece behind, which is a useful piece. People have been uh, complaining about a line piece, and I got, got a little tiny one. <laughs> it's, uh, it's also like this little domino piece I decided, as long as I have to code it in the game, I may as well make it so custom levels can have it. So now you can put them in your, your little custom levels and have your domino level if it's really fun for you. And lastly, the tiny, tiny shark. Like, I don't even know how I could draw this guy smaller since the sharks are already like two heads tall, if that. But I managed to squeeze him down into a tight little square and he's kind of adorable. Um, when he eats your piece, he just eats a little tiny bite out of a corner. And I thought rather than taking that corner bite and eating it like and grinding it down like the other sharks, he just takes one big and like eats it all at once. And it gave me an excuse to use this uh, stock sound effect one of my friends got a kick out of in Frog Finder. And he was like, you should squeak that sound into turbo fat somewhere and I was like I know just the place so it turns out it's a little harder than I expected just to remove a chunk from a Tetris piece because these are represented as like lists of coordinates in my game so you can see for example a J piece has coordinates 0 0 0 1 1 1 and 2 1 those are the four blocks that make up the J piece when it rotates clockwise then it has like 1 0 2 0 and so on so it's just a list of coordinates for each rotation so if that 0 0 coordinate is deleted from a piece because a shark ate it which of these other coordinates is deleted with it. That's kind of a hard puzzle. I solved it in this piece mutator script if you want to see my solution or if you want to come up with a better one. Um, and then the other hard puzzle was um, these piece kicks. I wasn't sure if you delete a corner off a of U piece, now it looks like a J piece. I was like, should it keep the J pieces piece kicks that you're familiar with or should it just keep the ones from the U piece that you dissolved? And I ended up just saying, keep the old ones because it was easier to implement and avoid some weird edge cases, so. Um, I might go back on that later, though. 
So next I got to design and playtest a whole bunch of really fun levels. And the first one was inspired by this old Tetris clone called Niet 3 Revenge of the Stones, which had a level which was just S and Z pieces and nothing else. It was so impossible. But I thought maybe if I combine that gimmick with these sharks, now you'll have like a tool that'll help you fit these together easier and get a lot of points. So that's a fun level. I also designed this shark bait level, which just beats itself. And it's like the stupidest level in the game, but you can get way more points if you wait and uh, do some clever stuff with sharks, which I won't spoil, but see if you can figure it out. I had an idea for a level I thought would be fun where it would just give you so much garbage you could never survive, but then sharks show up to save the day at the last second. I couldn't make that one fun. It was just too gimmicky, but it did lead to a more fun idea, I think, where the game just gives you cheese at such an insurmountable pace. The only way you can beat that level is by using sharks to shape your pieces into perfect little cheese digging pieces. And it's a lot of fun to solve that puzzle. Lastly, someone in the community Discord, Buggo, had a suggestion for what if there was a level that only gave you pentominoes, which is like a death sentence, but you have these little yellow sharks so you can shape the pentominoes into tetrominoes and try to beat the level more efficiently or to get really high scores. And it's really fun to solve that puzzle because like you'll have like a U piece and a P piece. And you'll be like, what the heck do I do with these? And if you eat them just the right way, sometimes you can figure out how to fit them together. It's a fun little puzzle. So that's it for March and April. We added sharks to the game. We designed a bunch of levels around them, which actually finishes off Pokey Desert, the entire area's story and levels. Everything's done. Normally, I would say next month, I'll be working on Cannoli Sandbar, except that Godot 4 just released, and we have to upgrade because there are some bugs in the game, like with Overworld Shadows, where just the only way I know to fix it is to upgrade to Godot 4. It has just a node in it which says, like, put a bunch of sprites in me and I'll make them translucent. And otherwise, there's just no way forward. So we have to upgrade to Godot 4. Um, it's probably going to take at least a month. I hope it won't take more than two. But the only light at the end of the tunnel is that I have done this upgrade for Frog Finder, and I finished. It just took a few days. So I think Turbo Fat will take like an order of magnitude more, just given that it is a much bigger game. But I think we'll get there. So hopefully I'll learn something in the process and, and let you guys in the loop next month. Um, in the meantime, if you want to try out the game, it's free on Itch.io, and you can join the community Discord and come chat about Turbo Fat and let me know what you think. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys next month.